trail along the Appalachian Trail when I found that herb they call ginseng. Growing deep down in the woods, that's where I got the goods. The herb that turns the autumn into the spring makes an older man cocksure and a younger man secure. Makes an older woman younger and a younger woman hunger. Ginseng, sing gin. Sing a little song and swing. Sing a little song, Jim, sing. From the bluegrass of Carolina to the hills of Northeast China. I've been and I'm going back again Did I really find the truth? Chinese fountain of youth The herb that the Chinese call Ranchin Makes you tingle if you're single Let you lose some if a two some You'll agree some if a threesome And you'll score some if a four some Jin sing, sing Jin Sing a little song and swing Sing a little thing, Jim, sing. Makes an older man cocksure and a younger man secure. Makes an older woman younger and a younger woman hunger, Jim, sing. Sing a little song and swing Sing a little song and sing Sing a little song on Jim Duke's farm and I wanted to say that, that Jim you're a very unusual person and one of the things that's unusual is that uh, unlike a many people who grew up on the farm and, and couldn't wait to escape it doesn't seem as though you escaped when you were going to college you were living outside town on a or outside the city in a, in a old farmhouse didn't you say yeah at and $25 a month $25 a month and right. here you are now 16 years on this place All right uh, why do you feel that you stayed and other people uh, couldn't wait to leave? Well, I've always uh, loved the outdoors, and I've got six acres of it here. That's that's more than I can handle. But uh, I think this is a beautiful place, and I do like to come out here. Same was true in college. My, my place just had a couple of acres there, but it was rented, and the toilet would freeze over in the winter. It was so cold, and one place didn't even have the toilet, so... These are my college days, not my poor, poor <laughs> pre-depression days. Uh -huh. And I'd have to take off on the motorcycle to get to a shower using the dorm shower to, 
to make the amenities of life. But I've gravitated back to my six acres. It's hard to call it a farm, uh, but it's a pleasant place to hide out. It certainly is, mm -hmm. and thank you for inviting us to come and tell us about where we're standing and what you're growing. I might as well tell you about this weird herb I've got in my... Well, let's tell the tobacco story. This uh -huh. looks like tobacco. This is not tobacco. But, you know, the, the American Indians gave us several things, and among them, the one that today commands the most money is tobacco. Uh, the potatoes and beans and squash all came from south of our borders, but the uh, Nicotiana tobacco has really become a scourge here in the United States, which reminds me of a poem that I think I recited for you a little bit earlier. Recited again. Okay, the white man brought a hush hush disease that brought the red man to his knees. The red man, half joking, got the white man to smoking, and now the last laugh a wheeze. Now, the Indian give us, gave us the tobacco, but in his benevolence, he also gave us this plant here. This is called Indian tobacco, or a less romantic name is pukeweed. Uh, its scientific name is Lobelia. And it contains the alkaloid lobeline, just like the genus Nicotiana contains the alkaloid nicotine. If you were to go to the drugstore today and say, hey, I want a pill that would help me quit smoking, chances are if you read the label, you'd see lobeline on the label because the alkaloid from this has been approved by the FDA as one of those over-the-counter drugs for the uh, smoking problem. Last but not least is the mayapple, and you've seen a picture of that. We don't have any this year because of the drought. The, the drought tricked the mayapple into thinking that winter was here. It's all gone down for the year and won't come back till next spring. It's very common down in the woods here. But it wasn't until 1986 that the mayapple, or a compound derived from it, was approved for cancer of the lungs. The Penobscot Indians of Maine, centuries and centuries ago, used to say that this thing would cure cancer. And Jonathan Hartwell at the National Cancer Institute studied it as much as 30, 35 years ago. But it was only in 1986 that this thing was approved, the, the compound etoposide, modified from the mayapple. It was approved for cancer of the lungs. That brings me to a point that I'd like to make. We really don't know all there is to know about these medicinal plants that have been around for centuries. For example, we have here one of my favorite herbs called Sweet Annie. The first time I saw this was on the Shenandoah River. We were celebrating my cousin's 25th anniversary, and we had a float trip going down the Shenandoah, bluegrass band and all. And when you go on a trip like that, you have more six-packs than you should, and you go ashore more often than you should. And on one trip ashore, I found myself surrounded by this herb, which I'd never seen before. Like a good botanist, I brought some back, and finally got it identified as Artemisia annua. I didn't see it again for three years. And then I was in Kunming, China, and a guy, a little Chinese scientist, came up to me and said, Dr. Dukka, do you know this plant? I said, yes. And he said, we're using this for malaria. It will cure malaria. And I wrote it down. I was on a cancer trip, so I didn't pay much attention to the malarial episode until two years later, I got a call from the guitar player who was on that float trip with me. <laughs> He's wor working at Walter Reed. And he said, Duke, where can we get some Artemisia annua? I say, hey, Les, you remember pit stop number two on the Shenandoah? <laughs> and he said, yeah, that was Artemisia annua. This was in October or September, beautiful fall day. So we jumped in the car and ran out to the Shenandoah and filled up the car with that herb because Walter Reed was studying this herb for its antimalarial potential. More important, if you're looking into alternative systems of agriculture, this also has two compounds that are herbicidal at the parts per million level. At below 10 parts per million, the compound artemisinin has been shown to kill several types of weeds. Before so 10 parts what? Per million. Uh -huh, okay. I can't convert that to percentages without my calculator, right. but that's very low, and uh, it's very similar to uh, one commercial pesticide. But the natural pesticides, like natural drugs have one problem going against them here in the United States. And let's talk about the, the natural drug. I know the figure is better there. To prove a drug safe and efficacious in the United States now costs over $125 million. One single drug. One single drug. This is averaging out the cost. You know, 20 fell by the wayside, mm -hmm. and you've got to prove it both safe and efficacious in animals before you take it to humans, yes. so it's a long and costly process. 
what drug company in its right mind would want to prove that this would cure malaria? Then you and I could go out and self-medicate, and how would they get their $125 million back? Mm -hmm. The same thing is going for the, uh, the natural pesticides. So the tendency is to modify the natural compound, to wiggle the molecule around, and you get something that has the same or better mm -hmm. activity, and the same or better, we hope, efficaciousness, and safety, and you've got a patentable product. Mm -hmm. But you can't patent good old Sweet Annie here, even though Sweet Annie might be just as good as what you might get in that pill. I'm not saying that, but that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. That's the strike going against us.